if you're a language learner, this has probably happened to you. You spend hours studying vocabulary flashcards, you know tons of words when you read them. But when you go out into the real world and try to have a conversation in your target language, your mind goes blank. In the book Fluency Forever, the author actually describes four levels of processing that our brain goes through, and understanding this will let us know how to remember a word forever. So the first level is structure, or understanding how a word is actually spelled. The second level is sound, or understanding how the word is actually pronounced. The third level is concept, so relating the structure and sound to an actual concept that we can understand. And the fourth level of processing, which we always want to touch on when learning new vocabulary words, is personal connection. So we need to make sure that these words are relevant and personal to our lives. So let's dive in a little bit deeper. To touch on that first level or structure, you simply need to understand how a word is spelled. So in order to do this, just take note of the spelling in your vocabulary notebook. Now to touch on that second level of processing, which is sound, we need to understand how a word is actually pronounced, which is why you should work on pronunciation totally from the beginning. The author of Fluency Forever has a really good point when he says, sound connects structure to your ears and your mouth allows you to speak. The more accurately we learn its pronunciation, the better we'll remember it. Now the concept part can get a little bit tricky because there are different types of concepts, right? Like abstract and concrete. But really what we need to do to make these kind of words understandable is relate words to more sensory experiences. And that's when step number four comes in. We can make a personal connection with these words. For example, when I started studying French, I started with Duolingo, which I think a lot of people do, and I probably learned like 50 words in that first week. I learned 50 words, right? I came into contact with 50 words. And to be honest with you, I forgot a lot of them after that first week, besides one. The word that I remembered, and obviously still remember to today, is the word for dog, or chien. And although I learned many words and forgot almost all of them, I will never forget the word chien or dog because I have two adorable dogs. And every time I'd see my dogs, I'd say c'est un chien. So I would bring that word to my life. I made that word relevant to my life because it is a word that's relevant to my life. So we need to make sure that the vocabulary that we learn is relevant and actually relatable to our life. And this is how we're going to be able to remember it forever. Now, obviously not every word in a language is going to be actually related or directly relevant to our life. So a kind of hack that we can do is relate those words to an image. Whenever we are studying a new word, we always, always want to relate the word to an image or something sensory. According to the book that I'm reading, we recall images much better than words because we automatically think conceptually when we see an image. And actually, our brains process images 60,000 times faster than words. So this is why on your vocabulary flashcards, you should not just be translating from target language to your native language. You can do that, but always, always include a picture. When I prepare materials or homework for my students and I send them Quizlet flashcard links to study, they always have pictures because I understand the importance that pictures play in conceptually understanding a vocabulary word and remembering it forever. Now that we understand how our brain processes new words, I'm going to share five tips to remember vocabulary forever from my process of actually learning three foreign languages. So my first tip for you is to learn like a kid. Now think about how children learn languages. They're immersed in a language. They listen to it every day. They have contact with it always for many years before they actually begin to speak. Now we should try to do the same thing. What I mean is that we need to constantly have contact 
or be receiving input from that language. And actually, I attribute the fluency that I have in Spanish today because I watched so many novelas. I watched so many soap operas and series on Netflix and videos on YouTube in Spanish. I received so much input for years. You know, when I was in high school, university, I spent hours a day watching Netflix. And granted, I don't have that time anymore. I'm an adult, I have stuff to do. So now I have to find other ways to have contact with languages. I still use series, I still use podcasts, but the point here is that we need to have input every single day. Now that I'm studying French, I do make an effort to have contact and input with the language every single day. And I actually do that with a resource called Link. So I've talked about this actually in previous videos and I actually started using it recently when I started my French learning journey. And Link is a language learning platform that will allow you to have input in a very fun way. You practice listening and you practice reading with resources that we all love like YouTube videos or Netflix or articles. And Link already has a library of thousands of hours of content to choose from. So the great thing about Link is that you can use resources that are very fun and interesting. So I actually do love this channel. I watch them often in English and I found them the French channel here on Link, so I can use their videos to actually practice listening and reading. So the wonderful thing as well is that if you don't actually recognize a word when you are watching the video or reading the transcript, you can click on that word and it will actually give you the translation and some different uses. This is a great way to practice that pronunciation and also to engage the structure. So to learn how to write these kind of words. So the wonderful thing about Link is that it will actually keep track of all of the new words that you learn. So when you're watching videos, you will finally be able to keep track. Well, the app will keep track for you. But what I really want to show you guys is how to import lessons. So there's a really cool Thing about Link, which is that you can create lessons based on materials that you actually like. So I'm gonna go here to this import feature and create a lesson. And I'm actually gonna create a lesson based on this video from Inner French. In my opinion, this is one of the best ways to actually make a personal connection with the language that you're learning because we love watching Netflix and we love watching series. And what better way to learn the way that a language is actually spoken than by being in contact with the content and with native speakers. So this is a wonderful resource for practicing input when it comes to listening and reading. And you all know that I'm a big fan of making language learning fun because the only way that we'll keep up with learning a language for years to come to achieve fluency is by actually enjoying the process. And I think by finding resources like these will actually help you stay committed to the process long term. You can also download the app on your phone so you can study when you're not at home or when you don't have your laptop. For example, I would recommend you if you're taking the bus or if you have a commute to work, if you have to take the train, you can use the app to actually just go ahead and do listens here. If you want to try Link, you can download it directly to your phone. And if you upgrade to a yearly plan, you'll automatically get 30% off. But if you upload with the link in my description, you'll get a 35% discount. So this is a super great resource and it's totally worth the investment. There's tons of content on Link for you to take advantage of, but also you can create your own lessons based on music, based on Netflix episodes, or based on any resources that you genuinely enjoy. My next tip for you is to not learn in isolation. You always want to try to relate a word to its context. So don't just like memorize random words in isolation. You should always try to write example sentences in your vocabulary notebook because if you actually remember the context that a phrase or a word is used in, you'll have more success remembering it in the long term. And a good resource for you to do this is actually Youglish. So what you can do is when you actually learn a new word in your target language, so you can look up those words in Youglish which, for example, I'm going to look up the word error in French. 
and then Youglish will tell us the pronunciation and give us videos from YouTube in which they're using this word in context. So not only am I getting that pronunciation practice, I'm getting some input practice, but I'm understanding how this word is specifically used in context. It's also really important for you to understand passive versus active vocabulary. What do I mean by that? I mean that we can understand many words, even in our native language, we can understand many words that are in our passive vocabulary. We understand them, but we don't use them. So in order to move words from your passive to your active vocabulary, you need to actively, intentionally, try to use those words when you're speaking. When I was learning Portuguese, I did this often. What I would do is practice input, so I would listen to podcasts or watch series, and every time I hear a new word or a new slang that I really liked, I would take note of it, and I would take my vocabulary workbook to class with me every Friday. And when I would talk to my Brazilian teacher, I would first of all ask them to give me some examples, like how do you guys actually use this phrase in your daily life? And then we would try to use that phrase, mimic the way that they would in their real life, in their real language. So I would move these phrases from my passive vocabulary. So yeah, like how I would understand a series and I would make it active by using it and practicing it. So I would recommend you to do the same thing. Whenever you hear a phrase or a word or a slang that you actually enjoy or you really like, take note of it and in your speaking lesson, actually try to use it. And this goes hand in hand with my next tip, which is don't just memorize practice we need to practice what we're actually learning if we really want to make sure that we can use it in real life so for example explain what you're learning to your friends or to your teacher or whenever you listen to a podcast episode or you watch a youtube video summarize it writing or record yourself speaking about what you learned and this is the best way for you to practice and actually acquire those words in the long term. If you're only consuming, if you're only receiving input and you're not producing, that vocabulary won't stay in your mind forever. As I said, you can record yourself talking, speak to yourself in the mirror, try to talk to your friends or speaking buddies. Honestly, I even practice with my dogs. Like sometimes I just speak to my dogs in Portuguese or I'll say things to them in French that's okay you know it sounds a little bit like sounds a little crazy but that's fine I'm practicing my language I wonder if anyone else talks to their pets in the language that they're learning anyway any practice is good and finally learn relevant words one of the biggest mistakes that I see is that people often just want to memorize a ton of words like memorizing a lot of colors in English or for example all the animals and unless you're a designer you probably don't need to know like all the different shades of colors and unless you're a vet you probably don't need to know like all these different animals so focus on learning vocabulary that's actually relevant to you because this is the kind of vocabulary that's gonna stick that's gonna be in your mind forever Think of your profession, think of your hobbies and your interests. What kind of things do you like to learn about in your native language? What series do you like to watch in your native language? And do all of that in your target language. That's how you're going to learn vocabulary and topics, language that's actually relevant to you, your life, your hobbies, and your interests. For example, I would study entertainment and even travel because those are interests that I actually have. If you're a construction worker, maybe you could study different tools or you could study like different verbs with body movements, you know? If you're a personal trainer, study some different gym equipment, study some different workout, I don't know, protein kind of supplements but make sure that it's vocabulary that you actually use in your daily life and not just random words because if they're just random they're not useful for you and if they're not useful for you you're going to forget them so be intentional about where you put your brain energy 
If you found these tips useful, let me know in the comment section down below. And I have some news for you guys. This is going to be the last video that I'm posting in a little bit. This is going to be a break that I'm taking from the podcast. We're going to go ahead and do a season break. And we will be back in a few weeks with season three. So we're going to work on improving our content, improving our topics, and bringing more language learning tips for you all. So we'll be posting shorts and we'll be posting community posts and polls. So I would love to see interaction from you guys. But as for podcast episodes, we're going to take a little break. So give this video a like if you haven't already subscribe and leave me a comment down below. So I will see you guys very soon. Bye.